the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Welcome to a new week of interesting bits of history with This Week in Royal History. I'm your host, Rebecca Larson. I created this series to encourage fans of the show to maybe dig a little deeper into all royal history, because it's through understanding the past that we get a better idea of why people did the things that they did. This week, we begin our journey in beautiful, sunny 13th century Spain with the birth of Eleanor of Castile around 1241. Eleanor was the daughter of Ferdinand III of Castile and Joan, Countess of Ponchu. She was their eldest daughter and second child. Eleanor married her second cousin, Edward Longshanks, on the 1st of November, 1254. They had 16 children, though, as was common in the time, many did not live to adulthood. Edward was the heir to the English throne as the eldest son of Henry III. The marriage was political, and Edward received Gascony from Eleanor's brother as a condition of the marriage. Eleanor and Edward spent a year in Gascony before returning to England in 1255. In 1270, Eleanor accompanied Edward on crusade where she gave birth to a daughter named Joan in 1272. While on crusade, Eleanor learned of her father-in-law, Henry III's death, making her husband, Edward I, King of England. Eleanor and Edward were jointly crowned in August 1274. Eleanor did not have much political influence, but her cultural influence remained in England for years after her death. She popularized carpets and tapestries on the floors and walls, a traditional Spanish extravagance. After having been pregnant over a dozen times in her life, Eleanor had seemed the bill of good health. But after her last pregnancy, Eleanor's body was weakened. Eleanor and Edward were very close, and she frequently traveled with him. At some point in their travels, it's believed that she contracted some form of malaria. It was this week in 1290 that 48-year-old Eleanor of Castile, Queen Consort of England, took her last breath. She was buried at Westminster Abbey. Of the royal couple's 16 children, the only one to survive to adulthood was their son and heir, future Edward II. Born in 1338 and nearly a century after Eleanor of Castile, Lionel of Antwerp joined the royal household of Edward III and Philippa of Hainault as their third-born son, but second surviving. And as an interesting side note, he grew up to be an extremely tall man, some say seven feet tall. Lionel's eldest brother was Edward the Black Prince, and his younger brothers were John of Gaunt, Edmund of Langley, and Thomas of Woodstock. Through his marriage to Elizabeth de Burr, he was created the Earl of Ulster in 1347. They had one daughter, Philippa, together. Lionel was appointed governor of Ireland in 1361 and created Duke of Clarence in 1362. He lived in Ireland until 1366, when he returned to England. His wife died in 1363, I hope you're keeping track of all of these dates, and Lionel then married Volante Visconti in Milan in 1368. They spent a few months in Italy, where Lionel became ill and died on the 17th of October, 1368, at 29 years old. The House of York claimed the English throne through Lionel, as his great-great-grandson was Richard Plantagenet, 3rd Duke of York. Much like Richard, 3rd Duke of York, just across the channel, Marie of Anjou held both by birth and marriage a right to the French throne. 
Born in France on the 14th of October, 1404, Marie of Anjou was the daughter of Louis II of Anjou and Yolanda of Aragon. She was their eldest daughter and was betrothed to Charles, heir apparent to the French throne and her second cousin. On the 18th of December, 1422, they were married, only months after he had become King Charles VII of France, therefore making her Queen Consort of France. Together, they had 14 children, though, as we've said many times, not all survived to adulthood. Marie acted as regent during the many absences of Charles, and she made several pilgrimages. Her husband died in 1461 and was succeeded by their son, Louis XI. Marie died this week in royal history, 1463 at 59 years old. One of my favorite stories from royal history is that of Maximilian I, Holy Roman Emperor, and Mary, Duchess of Burgundy. If you're unfamiliar with their story, make a note now and dig a little deeper, and I think you'll thank me later. Well, Maximilian and Mary had one daughter named Margaret. You'll know her as Margaret of Austria. Margaret's mother died when she was two years old, and that same year she was promised in marriage to the son of Louis XI of France. I think we just talked about him. The betrothal was eventually called off in 1491. Her father then negotiated her marriage to John, Prince of Asturias and only son of Ferdinand II of Aragon, and Isabella I of Castile. Margaret almost died in a storm on her way to Spain, but eventually made it, and the couple married in April 1497. John unexpectedly died only six months later, and Margaret gave birth to a stillborn daughter in April 1498. She returned to the Low Countries and was present at the baptism of her nephew, future Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor. Margaret then married Philibert II, Duke of Savoy, in 1501. The marriage was happy, but remained childless, and Philibert died in 1504. Then, in 1507, Margaret was named Governor of the Low Countries, and took over the regency of her young nephew, Charles, and raised him and his siblings. Margaret remained the governor until her death and brought prosperity to the Netherlands. She, along with Louise of Savoy, signed the Treaty of Cambrai, known as Ladies' Peace, in 1529 to end the war between Austria and France. Margaret died this week in history. 1530, at 50 years old. Isabella Clara Eugenia was born on the 12th of August, 1566, to Philip II of Spain and his third wife, Elizabeth of Valois. She had a younger sister born in 1567, and then her mother died in 1568 during childbirth. Isabella and her sister received a good education and were close to their stepmother, Anna of Austria. Isabella's father claimed the French throne for her in 1589 when her maternal uncle died. But France followed Salic law and she could not inherit. So Henry III of Navarre was the eventual ruler, crowned in 1594. On the 18th of April, 1599, 33-year-old Isabella married Albert VII, Archduke of Austria. They had three children, but sadly, they all died young. Before her marriage, her father ceded the Spanish Netherlands to her and her fiancé. Isabella and Albert ruled jointly until his death, after which she became governor of the Netherlands. During their reign, the court at Brussels became one of the foremost political and artistic centers in Europe. 
Their reign is considered the golden age of Spanish Netherlands. Isabella became a nun in her later years and died this week in history, 1633, in Brussels at the age of 67. After her death, the Netherlands reverted to the Spanish crown. And that concludes this week in royal history. I hope to have shared some new stories with you that you can go now and dig a little bit deeper. Because history is always more than what's on the surface. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.